it was absolutely the woman that was at fault. It I was it was her fault that she didn't find the happy ending she was looking for because in what time span were you having eight healthy <laughs> relationships? That's a good point. <laughs> Women have to understand this. Y'all are hard headed. And women don't listen. She had eight failed relationships. You're not gonna sit here and convince me that it was not a safe space and guys don't like to talk. No, they're talking, she's not being receptive, right? Everybody talks in different ways. You walk on eggshells, the relationship makes you feel drained. One of the parties is a hostile communicator. One of the partners has controlling behaviors. And lastly, they're hypercritical. So why do you think a lot of people are not together right now? Hold up. We live in a toxic world right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a keep having sex with you because it's fun, but I know you don't give up. You know, like, that's So what my, are you doing? I've been trying to be more open with my feelings, trying to trust somebody who could actually care for me instead of just me denying it. Oh, there's no way he loves me. Danny, oh, can I, can I... When I went to social media, it was to become the it girl. So I could feel this popularity, but just because you have popularity in your head, your mindset doesn't change. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, we love the engagement. We love the comments. Some of y'all be thumb thugging. We ain't really feeling that, but it's okay. Um, we have plenty of episodes coming for y'all. So make sure you tune in every Thursday. We have some new fire dropping every Thursday. And we also go live every Thursday. So remember, Thursday is the day. Some new fire from A to the table. We're going to bring it to y'all raw and direct. And make sure you guys are tuning in. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, engaging. She said raw and direct, by the way. So there's a story I want to share with you guys. You know, I was online, I was looking up, and I saw this story, article, whatever you, whatever have you. It's a lady that had like eight relationships, and after all her eight relationships, they all failed. So they all went to get married, they proposed to other women, but she never got proposed to, she never got married, and she started thinking to herself, like, am I the problem? You know, think about it, like you had Relationship after relationship, you thought you was in love and you thought you could make it down the aisle and you only made the supermarket out. <laughs> so, <laughs> and with that being said, Jordy, is it like she's too toxic for love? You know, like when, I'm, when you hear the story, what do you think? Um, I don't think anyone is necessarily too toxic for love, but I do believe that love now isn't always positive, especially with relationships like between two unhealed people, like their unhealed traumas. Um, and not for nothing, just because people are getting married does not mean that's a successful relationship. Just saying that right there, that could be a band-aid, you she know? She had like eight failed relationships and they went on to get married. Like, if that happened to you, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Where's your head at? Um, well, honestly, I'm a very like stay in my lane kind of person. I'm really not too worried about what other people are doing with their lives. But it really would cross my mind, like, what part I played in the whole mm -hmm. relationship. And, like, if my negative um, reactions or maybe tendencies outweighed my positive, you know? But I still feel like it takes two to tango. If you have <laughs> eight failed relationships and they go on to be married, mm -hmm. even if it's not successful, they are seeing a more purposeful future with that person after you, right? So if you have, my, the craziest thing is that it took eight, right? And like, <laughs> welcome to eight at the table. Well, yeah, it takes <laughs> eight, eight, eight at the table. <laughs> but like, and, and what I'm gonna go on to say is, I typically think that that comes with a lack of accountability. Mm. Because if, if I'm starting to realize that three of my exes are going on to get married, I'm gonna be happy for him at one, two, three, congrats. You know, I wish you nothing the best. By the fourth one, I'm questioning like, wait a minute, <laughs> hold on. After we separate, you find somebody else, y'all get married a year or two later. I was with you for two years and all we did was fight and complain and end up nowhere. I need to start doing some self-reflecting. I need to, need to take initiative to figure out what I am doing. And I think the problem is, people don't know how to point the finger at themselves. I and agree. they can easily say, well, you know, you were, you know, during that time, you didn't really have it all together. Well, guess what? Maybe the person that they're with now helped them get it together. I didn't. So sometimes when, when you point the finger at yourself, you're, uh, you're able to reflect and take accountability so it don't take eight 
It don't take eight failed relationships. Yeah, and I, I think accountability is number one, but I also think that being able to be honest with yourself about what you want, because you, uh, you talked about this earlier about like having a fairy tale in your mind. You know, I think a lot of times, and again, the hardest person to be honest with is yourself. And if you're not honest with yourself about what you want, what you need, what you desire, it's not going to, it's not going to work with that person. Yeah. He might be fine. He might have a six figure job, but he might not align with his, his, his morals and values and, and goals just might not align with you, but you really pushing that narrative of what, of, of what society says is good of what you think you want. You know what I'm saying? Not what you actually need. And so I think along with accountability, you have to be honest with. Wait, no, Amanda, you didn't speak on it yet. Yeah, I was just going to say, I feel like in this situation, in this scenario, it was absolutely the woman that was at fault. It was, it was her fault that she didn't find the happy ending she was looking for because in what time span were you having eight healthy (laughs) relationships? That's a good point. (laughs) I feel like if the first one didn't work, how much time did you take to heal and be better, find the mistake and be better for your next one to get into the third one, Mm -hmm. to get into the fourth one? Mm -hmm. You cannot be very successful when you haven't healed. Like Jordy says, you haven't healed from that last relationship. Did you look and solve the problems that existed in the previous relationships? You know, no, because you I, know what? Some people, I'm sorry. Go ahead. To go off what you're saying, what I've realized is that some people, there could be a problem with them, but what they do is they sweep it under the rug, right? So let's say if I have a problem with something and I'm dating you, and that problem causes me and you to break up, but now I'm starting to date Aaron, and what was the problem in that relationship with you is not mm-hmm. a problem with her. But guess what? There's now another problem over here. And so the problems tend to accumulate. You know, you keep sweeping problems underneath the rug and now all of a sudden the rug can't lay flat. And now you're going to be out here looking at everybody else like, damn, you know, they're successful and I'm not. And why isn't it? And you're right. It's because they didn't take the time. But that's because the problems that you have in this relationship may not be the same problem that you have in your next relationship. But that does not mean you don't have that problem. Quick question. So what it sounds like to me, and I know you hate when I say that, but what it sounds like to me is that like <laughs> at times people can walk on eggshells and not really address whatever the issue is. So it's like, oh, I don't want to upset her. Like, I don't feel like getting into it. I don't want to argue, you know. So let me just, you know, tiptoe around people situations, pleasure. you know. But I, but I think that's one thing that people have to be comfortable with. Like, it's, it's okay to, like, have a conversation. It's okay to have a difficult conversation. It's okay to have an argument. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't walk around on eggshells with a partner and expect that relationship to work. Because if there's a problem and you don't identify it, how else can you expect that person to change their behavior? How? Like, I mean, ain't nobody read minds around here. You know, so it's just like... I, and, and I'm be honest. I feel like men... And y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like oh, men. Oh, I feel okay, like no, no, but I, but I feel like men do it more because like y'all be like, oh, I don't want to get in an argument. Men, I don't want to like I don't want to. Wait, 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 the no, that's not what I, that's not what I was what saying. Danny said men don't like to don't talk. Know. The reason why we don't like to talk because... Don't say we, Oliver, because I like I to talk. I mean, you, you, you don't know. You go ahead and you say the reason why... Some you. men. The reason why some okay, men... Okay, so the reason why some men don't like to talk because it's not created a safe space to talk. Right. And that's also a tribute to a toxic relationship. Whether this is why probably why that lady had six failed relationships... And or that man had um failed relationship, but we're talking about you guys brought gender in, so that man is not gonna feel safe to talk because once he starts talking, you're gonna jump on him or shut it down, so or you're gonna you make it. Us. It's not a blame, but no. we are in this together. Wait, so, feel so, so hold up, hold up, just listen to what I'm saying. For anyone to talk, right? Don't you have to feel safe and comfortable to speak? Yes. I absolutely agree with like, you. Like, but it's just on the basis that I do feel like there is a. 
there's a motherhood energy that every woman has mm. and somehow some way it does get translated in them loving their partner somehow some way like the aspect of like okay hey like we're in this argument now all of a sudden i don't feel safe in like opening up to you or telling you the truth and like when you think about it like as a kid when your parents ever like mm -hmm. had you in trouble or whatever you know you were very timid like being emotionally open you never wanted to be extra because maybe you would have been ridiculed for it so I understand the male perspective of not necessarily wanting to open up emotionally, but I do feel like on the woman's side, there's sometimes some women tend to think that growth is a collective. Like for her to grow, her and her man have to grow together. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like in a lot of boyfriend and girlfriend relationships, especially partners tend to forget that they really are on their own journey and they are on their own path. And to actually be a team, like you have to be your own player. Really? You can't play both sides because those benefits naturally aren't theirs if like the woman put up majority of the work. That's where I feel like arguments like household domestic shit, like a woman cleaning up a lot or things like that. And all of a sudden there's an argument like people butt heads all the time over little small shit. Yeah, but, but it's off of like the communication. I don't think it's that. Then what do you think it is? I don't think it's that at all. And to go on what you said, and to go off what you said, it's not even about it being a safe space. You have to, like, people have to, women have to understand this. Y'all are hard-headed. And women don't listen. Sometimes. That's a very likewise Why is statement. No, no, stop. Wait, Coming no, no, no. from a man stop. saying no, the hard-headedness, no, I'm just saying that's no, a listen. very likewise statement. No, but it, doesn't, it <laughs> does not matter. What I'm trying to say is, she had eight failed relationships. You're not gonna sit here and convince me that it was not a safe space and guys don't like to talk. No, they're talking, she's not being receptive, right? Everybody talks in different ways. If you have eight failed relationships, you don't know how to listen, you do not know how to take direction and direction is not like, I don't wanna put that in a submissive aspect, but taking direction like maybe, hey, you know what? You need to just do this, just this way. So then that way you get further in your life. And guess what? Maybe she doesn't listen in that regard. Hey, if you want for me and you to be better, I need you to do this so then I could give you that. Maybe she's not listening in that regard. But women tend to not listen. The ones that I believe jump from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship is because she doesn't listen to anybody. Okay. And as a man, we are supposed to be the provider and we're supposed to be the leader. But if you're not allowing him to lead because you're just not listening, then it's going to cause confrontations, which is eventually nobody's going to want it. I don't have a question. I don't really understand what you're saying. I just disagree with that. Men, <laughs> and I'm not talking about you. Okay. And I know we have different perspectives on, perspectives on this, but do you feel like men in general, when you take a, a mental account of you and of, of your friends, do you feel like men in general walk on eggshells Try to avoid fights. Try to avoid confrontation. Yeah, no. Wait, just hold on. Yeah. Try She's to avoid. Not you. You're not even a man. Try yeah. to avoid confrontation, like this, that, and the other. So or are they direct, um, comprehensive, succinct, and clear on whatever their issues are? My all of my friends, every one of them, and I have a strong group of friends. But I'm also going to say that my friends are pretty much successful and all of the things that they did. And being successful, actually, in one thing, is the same requirements in all of them. So yes, they are direct. Yes, they voice their p opinion. Yes, they're comprehensive. They had to teach me to be open-minded, to also be receptive to listen on the feedback. All of us do. When, when Oliver, like Oliver, for example, no offense, yeah. Oliver, Oliver would never fit in my circle of friends. Never, he would never fit in my circle of friends oh, because the that. way that we speak about our situations and the way that we address our situations is so left from him. Now, you asked me that question. Yes, we do give. There would never be a friend in, in my phone that says, hey, yeah, I wanted to talk to my girl about this, but I don't feel like there was a safe space to speak about it. That doesn't exist. Well, no, no, no. I wasn't <laughs> talking about safe spaces. What I'm talking about is there are oftentimes men, they're like, yo, I don't want the headaches. So I ain't even finna bring it up. 
that they that, don't feel That's safe what I'm talking about. Talk about. No, that's not a safe space. Yes, it is. Okay. Think well, about it. I mean, this is not I, get what he, I get what you're saying, and I get what he's saying. But you gotta but, feel comfortable. What, what am I saying? I want to say okay, so what I'm saying the headache because they don't want to feel comfortable because they're gonna argue. It's not about. So why would you just said that? Conflict. You just said that the guy don't want to talk because it's gonna be what? You, what you just said? There may be an argument. So may, if if he's thinking it's gonna be argument, that you know at, what the, I'm saying? at the end of the day, if you are in your late twenties. Early 30s, late, late 30s, and you're single, you are somehow toxic. That's something that's not working. That's not Why? true. You've been, you've been dating since mm. you were 16 years old. Like, now you're damn near 40 and you're still single. There is something wrong with you. Honestly speaking, when I when I hit 25, I was like, damn, there is something probably wrong. This is crazy. Maybe he's being toxic. <laughs> is this what on. I'm hearing? But I'm, why? Women, men get married by the time they're in their late 20s, early 30s, you know late, But late toxicity 30s. isn't the only it's reason. Not Okay, Thank but you. I'm just saying, so are you just being single out here for no reason? Yes, a man yes, find a good yes, woman, yes, a woman find yes. a good man, you just single and you're not Some toxic. women okay, don't Danny, want men. Not really, okay, some okay, women okay, don't okay, want that's marriage. Not awesome. Most women that I know that are in the, in the late 20s, early 30s. And are they successful and happy they in a relationship? They are successful in certain areas, but the relationship <laughs> thing, I know why they're not successful. Because okay. they, they're, they're your friends. And no, 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 I don't know. Because they're your friends. I know there's <laughs> men that I know. Okay, but okay, when you see a 40-year-old man that's not married, that never been married, never been in a serious relationship, you don't think there's something wrong why with Why can't them? he just choose to want to be single? Okay, but like, 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 maybe you don't want to get married or something. The benefits, the health benefits, like owners. There's literally health one, benefits. No, 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 not health benefits. There's some <laughs> loners, but then also there are, let's say, a woman is not fertile. <laughs> and let's say, like, she's dating a man or whatever. And he wants kids. She gonna be single. Me, then she gonna be single. I get, but like, I'm not saying it's all people, but wait, most up, people, wait, like, like too far, there comes to a certain, like, where saying. you want to have that marriage with someone. Like, there's a lot of y'all, 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 Let's redirect the conversation to talk about are you too toxic to be in a relationship? Because we're going yeah. off on hella tangents right, right now. I got a question. Can you say the, the eight reasons? Yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. So here's some of the reasons place. that some people um, fail at their relationships. And, and, and <laughs> with respect to toxicity. I so to we, have, okay, daddy. <laughs> we have lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. You want your partner to make you a better person. You have oh <laughs> low emotional intelligence. Um, I mentioned space. this. I mentioned Shut this the earlier. Fuck up with the safe space, Oliver. There has to be a safe space to be, to be emotionally. Okay. Uh, back, yeah. back to it. Back to it. This is a hot topic. It really is. Aaron is ready. Thank Boy, you. Finish up, Aaron. Come on. This is um, so sorry, Aaron. <laughs> and I mentioned this earlier. You walk on eggshells. The relationship makes you feel drained. One of the parties is a hostile communicator. So this is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is what Oliver was pointing at earlier. And Danny. Um, one of the partners has controlling behaviors. And lastly, you're hypercritical. And I actually think hypercritical is something. I go I'm that, hypercritical. I am. That I think we really need to talk about. I, I, I got this. That's an official. Can I add one to Yes. Can I, and you own all seven. Can I add one? <laughs> can I add one that's not on the list? Oh, boy. That made me, with y'all speaking, made me pick this up. <sighs> You're toxic because you have a toxic group of friends outside your relationship. I don't have no friends. Not you. You're my friend. <laughs> you said Danny. You said, you're my you said, friend. My you friend. said that the people. Yeah, yeah, Danny, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Birds of a feather flock together. I agree. Uh, yeah, or not. Yeah, okay. you're the so company let's you keep. Let's, 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 let's put it out there. We all went to school, right? So now we're looking at marriages. Is there any marriages that's happening? No, there's a lot of baby mothers when that, that's not married, that are in a single relationship, raising a single child. So there is a lot of toxic people uh -huh. out there. Single child? Like, huh? say, yeah, a lot of parents, are, a lot of women are single parents, right? No, let's talk about it. Like, there's no marriages. Or you see, or, or you want to come to my baby shower? Or you want to come to my baby shower? Where's the wedding? Or we're not together, though. So why do you think a lot of people are not together right now? Hold this, up. We live in a toxic world right now. We identified the eight, and now how can we get out of that? We need a healing process, right? I After think, we just the eight, okay. what do we do now? Honestly, I think the biggest, the, the number one thing a person has to do is be self aware. I was just going to say, like, start with if the you, yeah. like the only way you can take accountability for your actions is being aware of the bullshit you want. I agree. You know, and, 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 and 
you can't have a, I mean, you can't have B without A. I'm sorry. Like there's literally no way for you to not be cognizant of the bullshit you're doing and still call yourself accountable. You know, everybody has a journey, you know, no one's going to make it happen overnight, but you got to start somewhere and and you, you have to take accountability and quit blaming other people. Sometimes too, right. And and that kind of like is a very, if I had to take all of them, I could put all of them into that, right? Which I'm not gonna right. disagree. Yeah, yeah. But like, okay. but now like the problem is when you put something at a very general topic, right? Some people are gonna say, well, how do you address, for example, there's some women or, or men who grow up without a dad and now are traumatized from whatever, from whatever experiences that they had to go through. So it's like, well, guess what? It's not the fact that they're actually bad in the relationships. Anybody up in AA, drug dealers anonymous, no. alcohol anonymous or whatever, no. the first thing you have to do is admit you have a problem. Right. She, After she, you identify the problem, you mean? What's next? Then, yes. then, Thank you. Then, then you either go to counseling, you talk to your mama, like whoever you have the issues with, you figure out what led to that problem. But you can't start unless you know the what the, what the yeah. problem is. Like you have, you have to know what the problem is. I get that, but what I'm trying to say is the problem. Knowing the problem, you know how many people know they have a problem but don't know how to address their problem. That's what I'm speaking. You're speaking from no, no, no. Don't know how to address and don't seek out ways to address are two different things. Okay, who cares? It's two things that happen after knowing the problem. I can have a problem like, yo, listen, I drink too much, and I know I drink too much. More likely than not, people are honestly real with their problems with themselves. It's, no. Yes, they are. They could just, they just ignore it. It, right? It's like, yo, I know I'm a bad, I'm a toxic, hostile communicator. Let's just say this, right? And I'm like, well, I know it. It's not that I don't know it. I know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do next. So this is what I'm asking. I don't need a blanket statement. Nobody needs a blanket statement. What's next? If I have eight failed relationships, I know that I'm the problem. How do I fix my so problem? The- I went to get my hair done and we started talking about relationship and what are you doing or whatever. And while I was brought to my attention, I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just toxic. And she said, oh, maybe you just got the wrong opponent. You got to know when you're dating, you got like some people date the wrong person. Just like Alan said, you know, you want to go and party. Some partner just want to party with their woman. And that's fine with him because y'all going to party together. Some partner just want to stay home. But like sometimes you get with somebody, you know, you like to go out and he like to stay in. That's going to become toxic. Because he's not going to watch you go out every night when he stay home. A lot of times we try to make things work. Well, hold on. Let me tell you something about that one situation, Danny. Mm -hmm. (laughs) At first, you guys are just not compatible. Yeah. Right? You guys aren't compatible. You guys like two different things. But if you're going to continue a relationship knowing that he's this way, but you being you, going to continue being the way you are because you don't give a fuck what he likes or you don't give a fuck what he's doing, Mm -hmm. you're the toxic one now. You messing with him. You doing things that you know he doesn't like. He rather you stay inside. Maybe it doesn't have to be all the time that you have to stop doing what you're doing. But if you're going to be like, you know, I don't really give a fuck about this relationship or what he's doing. Not to say that you don't care about the relationship, Mm -hmm. but you don't care about, you know, mending something or you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Curbing your activities. I, 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 I yeah, curbing your activities somebody- for the sake of your relationship, and you're just going to do whatever the fuck you want to do, like, just because, and hold you're up. toxic. Wait, 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 wait. Somebody- hold up, Danny. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So, I think y'all missed it. But Rico and Allen is saying... 100%. Some people just don't know that they are doing fucked up things. So what we're trying to get to is how do we wake up? No, Rico (laughs) said... Hold up. Rico and Allen said that, like, some people are just comfortable in their ways, right? And what's next? Mm-hmm. What, like that's what it is. What's next? Mm-hmm. And there are some people that don't realize they are being toxic. They don't realize they're harming people. So how do we wake them up and get to the what's I next? Personally, so don't think what I'm saying, don't no, yes that. they do because there's time. Because over someone's of, for so, hold on, I will yeah. let y'all speak, please. There's, there's, I'm gonna use me. There were times I didn't realize I was bringing the same behavior and doing the same thing. So for Rico, it's it's he picked up a book. For me, it took me wanting to listen to all these women. Like Rico said, the common denominator, I kept going and it's like you get shot by a gun, right? And a bullet, you running, adrenaline. I'm adrenaline of toxicity. And then I stopped and I was like, oh shit, I did this. My blood has been dripping the whole time. So what I did was listen. And then with that information, I took it and I, and I chose to be a better person. It is a choice. 
So sometimes you don't realize that you're creating this space of, of, of toxicity. So I Not disagree every, with that. I don't think what? people realize Are the you, cycle that they're trapped in, but I do feel like people create this security blanket. Can I ask their you a whole question? victim. No, 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 you can't. You gotta learn There's this talk. whole victim complex. It's not which a is, victim, I just told no, you. No, 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 there stop. is a victim. Stop. I said there stop. is a victim complex that people hold within themselves to enable their toxic behavior because it is their defense mechanism. Mechanism, Like just what you said, like some men don't want to open up during arguments or whatever because they feel like it's not a safe space. Then again, if you were really solid within yourself and just within your emotions and what you're feeling, you're willing, you're able and capable of creating that safe space. How can they get there? Wait, right. When I was 21, 22 years old, I thought the same way. And I knew what I was doing. I just didn't think it was that bad. But then when I realized and I looked back and did some self-reflecting and I realized the common denominator is me, I had to listen to a recommendation to read this book to want or to seek out change because I wanted to change. See, yeah. the problem is people don't want to change. It's not that they don't know what they're doing. And it's not that they don't understand what they're doing. They just don't want to actually be different. I, I agree with I, what you're saying. I'm saying people Jordan, aren't aware no, of Jordan, the toxic Jordan. cycle that no, they're Jordan, in. Jordan, the, continuous, the continuous of each relationship, the eight relationships, she was continuously jo doing yeah, okay, certain Jordan, behavior. Jordan, listen, I agree with Rico because... People know what they're doing. They just don't take accountability for what they're doing. People you know what I'm saying? Them. Because at the end of the day, every man I mess with, they told me I don't open up and I don't trust. And the next person I start messing with, you don't open up and you don't trust. And I just that. keep going. So and it's do a the same cycle. Thing. It's a cycle. But the thing is, I know what I'm doing. Like Rico said, I, I, I haven't come up and be like, you know what, I'm going to change that. But don't ever think after a relationship, somebody don't know is dumb at the end so of the day. So when that, when that significant other told you, like, this is how you are and these are your toxic yeah, traits. every one of them. Did you in your head, like, for the next relationship was like, okay, well, now that's in my back of my pocket. Mm -hmm. I know that's what I do. So let me get myself out of this cycle. And now my next relationship is going to look different because I'm moving different. That's what I'm saying. I was I'm not with, I wasn't willing to change my ways and my or my lifestyle or how I believe but things. But ultimately I toxic just behavior is derived from just a defense mechanism. But that's what I'm saying. Like you're no. trying to protect yourself. You don't understand. Not always. No. Jordy, so the thing is, Jordy, the thing from? is I know what I'm doing wrong. Like Rico said, you know what you're doing. After a while, after like four, you should know what you're doing wrong. You know what I'm saying? But my whole thing is I just wasn't ready to change that. I, every If every relationship I go to, they'd be like, you know what? You don't trust. You know why? You don't open up. And I go to the next one. I'm like, oh, you bugging. I know I trust. And I know I think that. And I go to the next one. I do the same thing. Danny, if, if would, you, not, would that be your same reaction after seven failed relationships? No, because I know I'm, I've been know I'm the problem. But the thing is, I'm never willing. I know I don't trust for real in life. But I, in my mind, I'm not willing to change that. Now I'm more like, okay, maybe I should be more open-minded. Maybe I should try and do this. You know, maybe well, I should speak about my feelings. Maybe I should tell them, man, I love you for the first time. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I should just do that and see how they feel. So it, at the end of the day, oh, Rico is right because at the end of the day, people know when they not, just like you know, you know when you're toxic. Question. So let's, let's kind of move the conversation along. So I, I want to, because we, we, we touched on this earlier, mm -hmm. but I feel like there's a movement right now. You talk about this all the time. There's a movement about men having a safe, spa safe space to talk. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe you and your friends are probably a little bit different from, from a lot of other men I don't who don't so. feel like, well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I, and I'm going to say this from personal experience. My personal experience, I feel like, and this is with men I've dated, my mm -hmm. brother, my cousins, my daddy, like a lot of men just don't broach certain conversations because they don't want all the extra that comes with the conversation. They really just want somebody to sit and listen and digest and change direction. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we all want when we communicate. But I feel like men believe that women have a very hard time sitting listening, uh, digesting, take, taking that and, and changing directions. So I, I, wanna, I want you guys to kind of talk about men having a safe space and why men don't communicate because they don't feel like they have the well, safe space. Can I go first? Because you you I'm, I'm already going to be on the opposite side of you. I personally think, all right, I'll be honest with you. 
I also believe depending on where you grow up would also dictate the type of men you're around. Down south, men are a lot more lenient than up north. This is like almost a fact. Lenient with respect to what? Lenient and letting things go. Being more nonchalant, being more, you know, laid back. Up here, we are we are known to be more direct and upfront. That's what the tri-state area is known to be. This is where I grew up. I'm speaking about New Jersey. This is where I grew up and the people that I've been around, all of them, from the ones that were my acquaintances and my friend and ones that were my friends. We don't it's not even about not feeling that there's a safe space because of a headache. We don't even care about the headache because all of us are like, yo, this is what I want. And it's really going to be this. Or it's either going to be this or you're going to be not. I personally believe that right now, especially with my age group and my age bracket of women, they are more so so independent <clears throat> that they don't care to listen, which is cool. It's respectable. If that's what you want to do. So, But as in, in retrospect... When it's all said and done, you're going to have a domino effect of a bunch of failed relationships because you weren't listening or maybe, well, in this case, I should say, you know, if you have eight failed relationships, it's nine times out of 10 because you're not listening or you're not receptive to listening. What I believe is you are not too toxic for love, even if you have all eight traits of being toxic that we just announced or even more, if and only if you absolutely value love, right? Because when you value love, you will do anything to change to be in love or be with somebody that you love. The only thing that I can honestly say, and speaking for myself, I never gave a fuck about love. I never gave a fuck about getting married. I never gave a fuck about really keeping a relationship because I knew I could always have a female. It's not a hard for me. So my toxic behaviors lasted so long because I didn't care for love until the one person that came in my life and actually gave me peace and showed me that, yo, you know what? Love is something to look forward to having. Now I took a step back. I started to realign and readjust some of my behaviors. It's a work in progress, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, now I actually value love to a certain extent where I'm willing to change because I care about love. We got a bunch of people who don't care about love and they think that they could find love, that they think that they could find love or find the same love in the next person. Yo, me, me and Amanda don't work out, it's okay, there's another one. And I think I'm gonna get the same love over there, but realistically, you'll never get past that threshold of love until you value love enough to self-reflect and change yourself for love. I, I disagree, I, I, I agree. disagree. I disagree. Now, Danny, you've been going. Go ahead. I disagree. (laughs) Oliver, Luke, disagree. It's more than just love. Some of the points Rico said, I say, I disagree, but I I, I agree with some points. Here's my viewpoint. You can't be too toxic for love. You can't be too toxic even for friendship. You have to self-reflect and realize, like, yo, what is going on here? Why am I can't get close to this thing that I'm feeling, this thing that I want. I am too toxic. This, is, this, this bag is too heavy for me to carry. So until I've worked out on myself, figuratively and you know, physically, I can now lift these bags. I can now you know, get acclimated in love. But loving myself, say if you can't be too toxic, you can get in front of your own way for you to get to your own blessings. So yeah, you can't be too toxic. Yeah, for but when you love, and, and, but love it takes more than just love, right? Because everybody knows in a relationship, it's more than just love. That that's good, but it takes more than to love to propel and to continue and to continue, continue, continue. Yeah, and but, other moving parts, but that's it. But you no, know, I, agree, back, no, look, you I, I agree part. with you. No, okay. I agree. That's what I was gonna say. Okay. But I'm like, I agree with you, <laughs> Oliver, because. Mm-hmm. I feel like we had a conversation, me, Allen, mm-hmm. we had this conversation where I feel like I don't feel like I could be loved, you know? And they, they're like, why you don't feel like you deserve love? I'm like, I don't ever feel like I deserve love. And, you know, you remember we had that conversation? They're like, oh, no, then you can't think like that. But that's how I've been thinking. I don't ever feel, I feel like, oh, love always hurt and I don't feel like I deserve love. So I always I do my own, um. Yeah, and you hug me, remember? <laughs> and I always say that. And that's, that's, that's toxic for somebody to sit there and be like, you know what? I don't feel like I deserve love. So somebody like that is very toxic. You realize that that is your problem, mm-hmm. right? What's so nice? what are you doing? And this is what Rico was saying. What are you doing or what, ha- what are you doing or what have you done Something. to combat that? Um, right now, no. what am I doing? 
right now I'm trying to trust. I don't trust nobody. Nobody that I date. Only person I trust is my family and my close friends. I don't ever trust no men that I date. So I'm trying to believe or oh, this man could actually love me. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to really believe that. And I'm trying to open up to guys. Like, a man will sit there and tell me everything. You, I love you. I want to do this for you. I'm, I'm there for you. Let's be together. And I look at him like, in my head, it's so messed up. Or oh, you're lying. In no way you love me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to I'm keep having sex with you because it's fun. But I know you don't give up. You know, like, that's So what my, are you doing? But I, are you right doing now, I'm trying again? to be more op- open, trying to open, like, you know. So what more, are you doing to be, be more open? open with my feelings. I've been trying to be more open with my feelings, trying to trust somebody who actually care for me instead of just me denying it. Oh, there's no way he loves me. Jenny, oh. can, I, can I tell you something? Oh. Okay. And, and this is going back to what we were saying. And this is something that they actually said is that doing things cold turkey is actually one of the most ineffective ways to be successful in overcoming that problem. Short story, right? And this is just to kind of give you an idea of doing things in increments, right? For a year and a half, I did not curse. I did not say any curse words. I started off by trying to limit myself for 10 curse words a day. Mm -hmm. Once I can complete that for 14 days, I knocked it down to five. It took me about two months and then I did not curse for about maybe 11 or 12 months after that. Mm -hmm. But it took time and it took practice. And I didn't just say, I'm not going to curse on the next day. It's nine times out of 10, never going to happen that way. So just going out and saying, yo, I don't feel like I deserve to be loved. I'm going to just try to trust you. That's not going to be, the odds are that is not going to be effective. You have to find something that's going to make you and allow you to take that first initial step. It could be a slow step. Sometimes slow and steady wins the, wins the race. You know what I'm saying? But you can't just dive in and think it's going to change automatically. You're going to end up repeating the cycle. And next thing you know it, you could be 45, 50 years old, still repeating that same cycle and just now getting it. Well, Danny, I want to say that I think that no one is too toxic for love. Like, I was actually kind of on the fence, like, Heron Rico, Heron, uh, Oliver. I was kind of on the fence with how I felt about it. But there are people like Danny that feel like they don't deserve love because of their personality, because of their actions. And we all know Danny. Danny will sit down on this couch and be like, I'm fucked up in the head. I'm fucked up in the head. Like, she she says that all the time. And to think that she doesn't deserve to be loved, that's crazy to me because... Like we've all been saying, take accountability of your actions, want to change. And if that's how you feel inside, like if you want to change, if you want to like figure out, look at the steps, look at, look at the traits of, of toxicity, like point out what you think that you have, like what you obtain, try to work on it. Like you do deserve love, no matter whether you hold two traits on there, four traits, all eight, like you deserve love no matter what. So Take accountability for how you're toxic and change. Want to change and look for the steps in order to do so. And want love. I think, honestly, I think the point you brought up is very um, relatable. I think it's very relatable and it's very reasonable because you can't just be like, oh, I'm going to trust him. You're not going to just trust him. You're not, you know, you do have to do things in, in incremental steps so that it becomes a habit. Because how long is it? Two weeks to become a habit or two? What's it? Is it 14 or 21? Okay, so we'll, let, okay, let's just say it's 21 days for something yeah. to bec- for something to become a habit. 14 days to you, get in shape. You're not just gonna like you literally have to take it like those incremental steps. You have to take it one day at a time because all you're gonna do, like Rico said, is end up back where you were. So I feel like really that's something that we should talk about. Like what is a small step that you took? In, in, in realizing that you're toxic and realizing that you got fucked up ways and realizing that you're, you know, not the person that you want to be. Like, what have you done incrementally to make it happen? Danny, oh, I actually completely oh. understand you when you say like that feeling of you not deserving love or like that idea of like you don't deserve love. Because I honestly feel like that is something that I just got over personally. And Honestly, before all the crystals and the self journey and yoga, before all that <laughs> shit, I was like breaking hearts and just like. You aware? 
breaking hearts. Yeah, just want to know. She's saying it. Were you aware of you breaking hearts? Oh, yes, of course, yeah. I realized that it was a... (laughs) Okay, I just want to say that you... Never mind, go ahead. No, yeah, I realized I was breaking hearts because I was actively making choices that were disrespecting other people's boundaries, even if they openly told me that's what their boundary was. And it was kind of like I was trying to push that button and see how many times I could push that button until that button's not there anymore. And it was on that basis of like, can I trust you? Can I trust you? I'm gonna keep doing this and keep doing this, you know, until you kind of disappear. And it took me a very like long time to even get a grip over the fact that like, yeah, I was actively making the choice to hurt people. And it sucked. Ultimately now, I can say right now, it sucked. And I had to reach out to some of like, the past people that I actually did hurt and kind of, yeah, literally I I hit this dude up, um, one of my high school sweethearts. And I was like, yo, like, I just want to tell you, like, I am so sorry. I am so sorry because all the trauma that I instilled in myself while providing you trauma, like shit, now that we're 21, damn, trusting someone is really hard, you know, and even taking that first step. And it was to the point where, like, the conversation ended up really well. And he was just like, damn, like, the fact that you even hit me up about this, like, the old Jordan, I would have never even assumed that you were just about to talk to me about this, you know? And it really is that progression of, like, taking accountability, understanding that you have a problem, understanding that you have a choice to take accountability and to grow and be better. And wanting. Yeah, and not necessarily just wanting love with another person. I honestly started this journey just because I did not love myself. I wanted to love myself. I felt like if I didn't deserve love from another person, then shit, if I want to love myself, straight up. And then naturally, that's when I ended up finding other habits, I guess 21 days of showing love to other people that naturally, you know, I do have this very like hopeful mindset when it does come to love and understanding that it is just unhealed trauma. And it is us just being very defensive about opening up about this trauma to ourselves and just moving forward. So, like, honestly, I'm sending you all, like, peace and abundance. You've got this shit, girl. Like, come on now. <laughs> you deserve love. Sorry for me. Like, I said something No, so I don't feel sorry for you because, like, I have faith in you that you can grow and prosper to not only love yourself but love other people just because I know we are all here capable. I, and this is me speaking just to like kind of get you to understand what I'm really saying is when I say that you're not too toxic for love, that means you're not too toxic to ever get love if you want love bad enough. I'm a firm believer that anybody in this world, whoever wanted something, they went and they sought it out. Some Rega- things are just difficult. Rigo. Yeah, I'm real, not saying real, that it's real, not difficult, but, like, but it's all right. I'm not- it took a lot for me to realize my problem. And then it took a lot, it took for me to lose a lot to correct my problem. So you don't believe that you deserve to be loved, but why? And I don't want to hear anything that's general. I need specific reasons why you personally feel you don't deserve to be loved. I never felt wanted. Oh, from growing up, going to school, from coming here and not speaking English, from Liking boys not liking me back because I, I was in their luck. People did not start wanting me until I become this social media person. So I never really felt wanted. I never really felt like somebody really liked me. I always felt like, I always felt rejected. You know what I'm saying? So when people started wanting me, I don't know where I have like, like that ain't real. DMs, that ain't real. It's kind of like, <laughs> fuck my, it, it messed with my head. Like, how come when I was younger, y'all never wanted me? You know, y'all teased me. Y'all never, you know, I like so many guys and they're just like, you sound like you you have a speech problem. You, you, it, it was so much. So I never really, after a while, I just kind of like, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to become the it girl. When I went to college, I become the it girl. You know what I'm saying? When I went to social media, it was to become the it girl. So I could feel this popularity. But just because you have popularity in your head, your mindset doesn't change. You could get a million people if your head is messed up within that. You know, I was bullied since I was six years old. I have a speech impediment since I was five. You know what I'm saying? I've been bullied my whole life. The way I speak, 
I was in Haiti, I was speaking the same. When I was in Haiti, you thought I was from France because my, my speech was so blurry. I didn't start speaking Creole until I was 10. I came here, I'm like, okay, it's a new start. I still got bullied. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to fit in. So it's not until, like, people recognize, you know what? Like, you know, I'm older now. You know, they're embracing, you know, being bullied for being Haitian, being bullied for this, dating guys, and it's kind of like, I never felt like they really liked me. You know, I never really could trust them because people always make me feel like, you know, like a reject. So in my head, everything I went on, well, even, even if I had that face, like, yeah, whatever, but I still had that. It's still like, you know, your childhood drama, uh, trauma, I feel like is the worst thing to get away from. You know what I'm saying? So being that, I did with that for like 18, 19 years. So like, now it's kind of like, I just, why do you even really like me? You know what I'm saying? Even if they try. So this is why I probably even feel like I'm so messed up with people. I deal with people and I did do this, do that. to just push them away myself. You ever told any of yeah. them that to help it? Like, let's say if I'm trying to talk I don't, to you, that's you the thing, ever told I'm not, I'm not the best at opening up. I don't trust you. When people be like, I, I love you, I'm like, I just don't ever believe it. And this is why I go and do messed up shit to them and do whatever. Because I never even... And, you know, no matter how much you say you want me, I'm not going to believe it. I'm like, okay. I'm going to just like, okay, sure. Okay, yeah, you know. So that's probably why I even never told somebody I love you because I don't ever feel like it's real, like, you know. So that is me. I'm working on it now. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so, okay, we again, here we go, peeling back the layers. What, knowing that, what are you doing or what can you do to... Begin the process. Yeah, to begin the process because it's like, so you realize the problem. Yeah, for sure. But what can you do or what are you doing? I, I mean, I try to open now, like, and now. No, no, like, no. What they, are you doing to be okay, open? Okay, that's what I'm saying. Like, just like trying to trust people. You know what I'm saying? Like, some, you might see, somebody just might really love me. Like, even my cousin be like, oh, you're a really cool person. You think people don't love you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, people that I'm around, like, once they will, to know me is to love me, I believe that, you know what I'm saying? So my cousin and my friend be like, I, I, my cousin and my friend, my close friend knows that, they're like, you really believe that? People go crazy over you, like, you make people laugh. You know, at first, that probably was a, was a problem, but now people embrace you, people, you, it's good to be different, it's good to be that, so I'm just working on just loving me and, you know, like, fight my own demons, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, this was the past, Okay, I am different. Okay, I sound different. So all that I'm working on, that that's making it easier. You know what I'm saying? To just embrace other people. After all of that has happened, you became the it girl. And being the it girl is actually even harder to trust people because you're it. You don't know whose intentions are what. So I can understand why it's even harder now than it yeah. probably was before because now you just added more to it, right? But the one recommendation that I'm going to give you, and this is just from me to you because this is what helped me, you know, and maybe it could help you. You got to find some women who are being loved by their man the way that you would think is the appropriate way and learn from their relationships and keep them around. Because for me, I had to be around men that were better than me for me to learn from them. So what I'm trying to recommend for you is try to get around some women that are living the lifestyle as a family or in a relationship and that's getting the love that you believe is love in some capacity and learn from them. So then that way you can know what to look for for yourself, because it's even harder probably for you now than it was before when it comes, when it comes to trusting. I wanted to ask you. Um, well, I actually never said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got nothing else to say. Why? No, if it's too honestly, yeah. no, if it's too heavy, if it's too heavy, it is bombard. I mean, no. I think it'd be good now. No, it's, I feel like it's just like a yes or no. <laughs> but um, do you feel like your struggles with trusting, like they vary based on the person that like you're trying to trust? Like, let's say, like let's say it's not like on a relationship spectrum. Like, let's say trusting a man. That's obviously like a whole other you throwing yourself out there in the water. But then like, let's say another female, like y'all just meet and you have your close friends already, but like, are you still like, you feel undeserving of love? Like if you were to start like a new friendship, you know what I mean? I mean, with friendship, it's kind of different, but I also feel like a lot of friends that I, it kind of bring me back to what it was. Cause I feel like a lot of friends just use me for what they want. 
you know, they want to be around me because if they want me, they're yeah. going to be doing good. They're gonna, you know what I'm saying? So this trust thing, a lot of people don't trust. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the only one that don't trust. A lot of people have trust issues. That's probably the biggest issue in a relationship is to trust somebody actually care for you, to trust somebody that's actually going to be faithful, to trust somebody that's actually going to be there for you. Because people could say things, but are they really, that, do they really mean what they say? I could say, I love you. I could easily be like, oh, babe, I love you. Like, but do I really mean it? You know what I'm saying? So... I'm just learning to really like, you know, maybe someone actually might mess with me. Maybe what he does. I feel like just not being able to show I feel like he kind of killed me because I feel like even my cousin, like, you got so much love to give. Like, you know what I'm saying? And you feel like that that messed me up because you love so people that knows me, you know, I love like hard. We in a curious stuff. Like, we love very hard. So when when people close to me knows that, they're like, that's so messed up because you're such a good person, and I know it kills you inside. It do kill me inside because I'm like, damn, I have so much love to give, but I just, like, I don't want to just give it to the wrong people. You know what I'm saying? That's probably why I cheat all the time. You know what I'm saying? Let's be honest. You know? So that's messed up because not feeling like they make you do a lot of messed up things to people, you know? That make you not get, like, when you feel like you're not disturbing of love, that make you become a bigger cheater, a careless person. Savage. You know? Like, that make you become this person that you're not even that person but you just don't care so if you don't care but the per- other person gonna look at you as this bad person but you just really have your own issue you're dealing with so I'm just working on that right now so I but it took me a while to realize that was the issue but lately I've just been you know trying to be like stay grounded okay guys so we're gonna wrap up I just want to ask everyone on set right now what would you suggest for anyone in Danny's situation for healing I personally would, my best suggestion, this would actually just be for myself, but is to distance myself. I do a lot of writing when I need to like do self healing. So I have a journal. Um, so I distance myself from friends, not specifically family. Um, cause I like my family around, but I distance myself from going out, being around my friends. And I do a lot of journaling. How about you, Aaron? Therapy. You need to have somebody you can talk to. Like, I feel like when it comes to therapy, there's different types of therapy. And I think there's different seasons. So I think sometimes you just want to talk. You want to talk to somebody who's not going to run their mouth. I, I'm serious. Like, I'm, I'm not a very open person. So a lot of times right now, my season with my, with my therapist is just listening. I know you can't say nothing. Just listen to what I'm saying. I don't need you to yes man, yes ma'am me, yes man me, whatever. Like, just listen and let me dump on you. I say accountability. You sit there, self-reflect, what I did wrong, what I allowed, what I won't allow anymore. And, you know, okay, what are the steps I'm going to do to get there? If it's therapy, if it's taking this far, that's it. Accountability and self-reflection. I actually absolutely agree with Amanda and Oliver, the um, journaling and the self-reflection. I also do, personally, myself, that helped me, especially now, I did this shit this morning. I do morning affirmations. I just take like two to three minutes to decide just to remind myself that like truly I am worthy. I'm worthy of love, I'm worthy of wealth, I'm worthy of abundance. And as long as you have that mindset that you are deserving of everything, then you're gonna reap all the benefits, I promise. I promise. Yeah, and you know, for me, the last thing that I'm gonna say is once you can identify like how you did yourself, I would just say seek knowledge because knowledge is power. And sometimes reading, what I do is read, that helps me learn how to go about my next step in whatever situation that I'm in. So guys, thank you for joining. This was another great episode. Thank you, Danny, for being real and honest with us. We definitely admire that. Keep liking, subscribing, turn our notifications on, and keep supporting us. We love you. We'll see you next week.